Not only is moving to Las Vegas at the top of your list, but you also decided you wanna buy a home here in the next six to nine months. Now, before you go ahead and make a big change like that, make sure you watch this video until the end because I put together a checklist of all the things that you need to know before, during, and after buying a home here in Las Vegas. After this video, you'll be able to cross every T and dot every I and feel more comfortable about your big move. Now let's get into it. The first step in the home buying process is to find a great realtor that you wanna work with. Working with a great realtor is gonna determine how good or how terribly bad this experience will be. You should treat this part of the home buying process the same way that you would treat any job hiring. You need to be asking questions and getting to know your realtor and making sure they mesh well with you and are a good fit. Remember, you're hiring them to do a specific job, so being a good fit is very important. Your realtor is going to be working in your best interest, so there needs to be a level of trust between the two of you so that you can accept their guidance in helping you. If you feel like you don't trust your realtor, do not hire them. I've worked with clients in the past who questioned and fought me on everything in the transaction, and it made me start to ask the question, why did you even hire me in the first place? You need to understand that your realtor has your back from start to finish, so it's easier for you to let them do their job without the headache. And of course, not every realtor is a good realtor. That's why this selection process is so important from the very beginning. A great realtor knows the city that they serve, the current market conditions, and is an expert negotiator on your behalf. When you start this process of looking for a new home, it's very important that you have stable income and enough money saved for a down payment. You also need to consider what your current credit score is. These two numbers are very important in the home buying process because they're gonna be used to determine what a lender can pre-approve you for. Pre-approvals are measured by debt to income ratio, which is basically how much debt you have in comparison to how much money you make. It's important to understand that lenders are looking at how much debt you pay monthly and not the entire balance. And as exciting as it is to buy a home, what you need to understand is you can't skip the step of getting pre-approved. You actually shouldn't be going to go look at any houses until you are pre-approved. And in most cases, it's actually required to submit a pre-approval with your offer. And I know you're probably wondering, why can't you go shopping without a pre-approval? So think of it like this. What if you went out shopping for a home and you fell in love with a beautiful home that was $600,000? You're so in love with the home, you start to imagine your family there, what you would do in the kitchen, what you would do in the backyard, and you start fantasizing about all these different things with this $600,000 home. And then you go get pre-approved by a local lender and they only approve you for $550,000. As you can imagine, you'll be pretty upset that you fell in love with this new home that was $600,000, but you can only afford $550,000. So now you fell in love with this $600,000 home and now you know that you can't afford it and you feel like you wasted so much time imagining yourself living there. Getting pre-approved helps you position yourself to put in a competitive offer on a home that you not only love, but you can also afford. Now, before I move forward, let me make sure you understand the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification because they are not the same. A pre-qualification is a letter that tells you that you're eligible and qualified to buy a home, but it doesn't specifically tell you what you're approved to buy. Think of it like this. How many times have you received a pre-qualification letter from a credit card company that wants you to sign up with their new credit card? But when you open that pre-qualification letter and you call that credit card company, they tell you that you have to apply for the credit card and get your credit run in order to be approved. This scenario is the exact same way that things work in real estate. You can get pre-qualified for a home, but you still need to go through the process of getting pre-approved because a pre-qualification is only telling us that you're eligible to buy a home, but we don't really know what you're approved for. It's very important not to mix these two different letters up because they are indeed different. During the pre-approval process, your lender will determine which loan fits best for you. You can be pre-approved for one of four different loan types. These loan types include conventional, FHA, VA, or USDA loans. Conventional loans are the most common and they're offered through private lenders. FHA loans are common for first time home buyers because you only have to put down three and a half percent. And that three and a half percent can be used for a single family home, a condo, a townhouse, as well as a multifamily unit. I've worked with clients in the past who have used an FHA loan to buy a multifamily unit and they use it for a duplex, fourplex, or a triplex and they live in one unit and rent out the others for profit. It's sort of a real estate hack that not many people know about. The great things about FHA loans is they're backed by the Federal Housing Administration, which makes them government funded. Now, VA loans are for veterans, spouses of a veteran, or veterans on reserve. VA loans are offered through private lenders and they're backed by the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. The final loan type is a USDA loan, which is for home buyers who are in designated rural areas. This means that this specific loan can only be used in specific areas. Now, every loan type has their own benefits. 
Conventional loans require a three to 20% down payment and a minimum of a 620 credit score. And just like I mentioned earlier, FHA loans require a three and a half percent down payment, but the minimum credit score is 500. VA and USDA loans require zero down payment and the minimum credit score is 640. So if you are a veteran out there, using a VA loan is perfect for you because it has zero money out of your pocket. After you find a great realtor and understand your budget, you need to start determining what you would like in your ideal home. Now remember, there's no such thing as a perfect home unless you build it exactly how you want it through a new construction process. With resale homes, you're looking for that sweet spot of about 80% of what you would like in that ideal home. The other 20% are gonna be the things that you add and upgrade to the home to make it feel like yours. When you start home searching, you need to determine those things that are non-negotiable, you have to have it, and those other things are things that are nice to have. Making a list like this is important because it's gonna help you get closer to that 80% of that ideal home that you're looking for. So you found a great agent, you got pre-approved, and now you found that home that you truly love. The next step is to write a competitive offer. And the key word in what I just said is competitive. Your offer needs to be competitive. This is the part where the agent you hired showcases their negotiating skills and knowledge of the current market conditions to write a competitive offer. I write very aggressive offers and I do complete due diligence on these homes so that my client understands why their offer needs to be at a certain point. Now, after a competitive offer is sent in, a seller has three and only three options. A seller has the option to accept your offer as is, decline your offer, or submit a counter offer, which is basically an acceptance, but with a rebuttal. Now, what we want in this whole entire process is either an acceptance or a counter offer. When you receive a counter offer, you can expect your agent to use their power in negotiating to negotiate reasonable terms for you and the seller. Now, this process can go back and forth until a negotiated deal is accepted. Before I go into the next part about buying a home, if you're unfamiliar with who I am, my name is Chris Brown and I'm a realtor with Simply Vegas. And just like you, I wanted to move to a new city that made sense for not only my business, but also for my lifestyle. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and click the bell so you don't miss any new videos and you always know what's going on here in Las Vegas. After you're done with all the negotiating and you finally agree to terms with the seller, you have now an accepted contract. Once you have that accepted contract, you're now officially in escrow. Being in escrow means you now have an escrow officer who's gonna oversee the entire transaction. You will never send money in the transaction to the seller or the agent. Any money exchanged in this transaction is gonna be held in an escrow account and oversaw by an escrow officer. Once the seller and the listing agent accept your offer, you're gonna to have to submit what is called earnest money deposit. This is also referred to as EMD. Basically what this is is good faith money and it shows the seller how serious you are about purchasing their home. The earnest money deposit is gonna be taken off the total balance of your down payment at the close of escrow. Now, as a home buyer, there are upfront costs that you have to be aware of. The first upfront cost that you have to be aware of is the home inspection. This is gonna vary based off the size of the home, but you can expect to spend anywhere between $200 and $500. A home inspection is critical in the home buying process because it gives you the opportunity to hire a professional to come and look at the home and make sure there are no health or safety related issues. The main things to pay attention to with the home inspection are making sure the the electrical, the roof, the plumbing, and the foundation are in good working order. They also take a look at the HVAC system, which is very important when you think about living in Las Vegas during the summertime. The last thing that you need is your air conditioner going out during a hot summer month. Now please understand, a home inspector's job is to tell you every little detail about the home, whether good or bad, and any potential problems that they can see. Not everything that you see in a home inspection report are deal breakers and would make you wanna walk away from this deal. You wanna pay attention to the big problems like I mentioned earlier, plumbing, electrical, roof, and foundation. I was recently working with a new client who was relocating from California to Las Vegas, and we were under contract in this beautifully remodeled new condo. And when I say remodeled, I mean everything was done. The flooring was done, the kitchen counters are redone, the bathrooms redone, the bedrooms are redone. Everything from top to bottom of this home was redone and it looked really beautiful. So after we got our offer accepted on this beautiful condo, we went ahead and ordered a home inspection. And we found little things that we saw throughout the home that weren't deal breakers like I mentioned, but we did find one big issue with this home inspection. During the home inspection, we found out that there was a huge plumbing leak. Remember earlier when I told you that this negotiation process can go back and forth until things are agreed upon? This part of the process is the exact reason why. When you get a home inspection, if you find a major issue, you can submit what is called a request for repairs. This is a part of the negotiating process where you find a major issue through the home inspection and you can ask the seller to fix something. 
But please be aware they don't have to say yes, but it's always a good idea to ask because you never know. But continuing on from my story about my client relocating to Vegas from California, we submitted a request for repairs and we asked the seller to fix the plumbing issue. So as expected, the seller said no. So what happened with this story is the seller ended up saying no, so we terminated that contract and we ended up finding a better home seven days later. One of the other things that you're responsible for when you're under contract for a home is paying for a home appraisal. A home appraisal is when an expert home evaluator comes to the home and gives their expert opinion about what the value of that home is. This can be based off of the condition of the home, current market statistics, and recent sales in the neighborhood. They will take all this data that they gathered and price the home accordingly. This home value price from an appraiser is gonna tell you if you're paying fair market value for the home that you're potentially purchasing. Now, if the appraisal for the home comes back lower than what you were intending to pay for, you can go back to the negotiating table and ask the seller to lower the price of the home. At this point, you can still walk away from this deal if you have an appraisal contingency and you don't wanna pay over what the home is worth. A home appraisal will typically cost you about $500. I know I've been giving you a ton of information about the home buying process, but before I continue, I wanted to stop and ask the question, is this helpful and is it helping ease your mind about your upcoming move? If so, comment the word checklist below. And if you still have questions after watching this video and you want my help when you're ready to buy a home here in Vegas, you can book a consultation with me at no cost by clicking the link in the description below. So you got your home inspection and your home appraisal and now you have finally agreed to terms with the seller. But let me tell you what not to do next. Under any circumstances, do not buy or lease a new car, miss a bill payment, open a new line of credit or change jobs or have large deposits coming into your account. Any of these different type of changes can jeopardize your loan approval. Most lenders will do a final credit check before closing so they'll know if you made any of these mistakes. Before signing final paperwork, you're gonna have a 24 hour window to make sure that you go take a look at the home for a final walkthrough. This final step is to verify that no changes have been made to the home or damage has been done since the home inspection. It's also your opportunity to make sure that if you made a request for repairs, the repairs were actually done. On the day of closing, you're gonna make your way to the title company where you're gonna sign final paperwork with the same escrow officer who has been overseeing your escrow account from the beginning. And as far as closing costs, you will either submit a cashier's check or wire the remaining funds to the escrow officer. Now you finally close on your dream home and you realize the next step on the list is actually moving. This next step is gonna be the most time and energy consuming because let's be real, no one actually likes moving. You will need to find a great moving company that load and picks up your things and delivers them inside your home. You don't wanna make it to moving day and you're stuck moving with your kids, your wife, and one of your friends. Before even moving into your new home, you wanna make sure that you contact your local utility companies to make sure that all the bills are in your name. In Nevada, we have Southwest Gas Corp for gas, Nevada Energy for electricity, and Cox for internet. It's important to get these utilities in your name because the last thing that you need is to be attached or associated with any bill that was in the previous owner's name. Even though it was a long path to get to the final destination of buying that new home, you should feel like it was well worth it in the end. And the very first thing I told you at the beginning of this video is to find a great realtor. I can't stress it enough how important this is because as you can see, there's a lot of steps to this process to make it to the end. Can you imagine how confused and frustrated you would have been if you had to do all of this alone? You would really probably wanna rip all of your hair out if you had to do this by yourself. That's why I said a great realtor can determine how great or how terribly bad this whole experience will be for you. Realtors are literally there to hold your hand and guide you to the end, even after closing. For more videos about Las Vegas real estate and lifestyle here as a local, make sure you click on one of the other videos on the screen. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next one.